mentioned that we are um, fitness professionals, and we have a blog, Fun and Fit, and a column in Newshawk, Fun and Fit, and we're working very hard to make Newshawk news stuff. <laughs> so far, the publisher keeps saying, well, that's related to chocolate, and that worked for us. But I thought to start off the evening, I would share with you uh, nine reasons humanists need to be fit. Yeah. And yes, yes, and we're finding out that many of you already are, so this will pertain. Reason number nine that humanists need to be fit. They need to flaunt that they are already enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> Don't groan now. <laughs> Senator groaning for when she's up. <laughs> number eight, the strong shall inherit the earth. <laughs> Number seven, humanists need energy to clean all that graffiti off the billboards and the ads in the Midwest that keep getting uh, lambasted. Number six, humanists don't go for supernatural beliefs and magical thinking, such as when I break that cookie, half the calories escape. <laughs> truth, people, truth sharing. This is a, a truthifying, truthiness moment here. Number five, your body is a temple, your only temple. <laughs> Number four, humanism is a, quote, rational philosophy informed by science. And scientific research pretty much does support active bodies. So get moving to support humanism. Make yours a buff body, not the buffet body. <laughs> Curtis, you can grow now, because Alex at home. Don't grow, and I want that one. <laughs> if they're really good and really ready, she wrote them. Number, th actually, I do most of this. Number three, humanism promotes the exercise of rational thought, free will, intellect. No jumping to conclusions, however. Okay. Number two. Humanists have not been doing too well passing the comprehensive spir uh, soldier spiritual fitness tests. However, we can excel at acing regular fitness tests. And last but not least, reason number one that humanists need to be fit is you are living in the only body you'll ever have. So take good care of it. All right, phrase number one. Damn you. Bless you. May a camel breathe on you in close quarters. <laughs> Holy cow! Exalted bovine diva. <laughs> Bless you! Get your nose hairs off my shirt. <laughs> Go with God. Choose a designated driver. <laughs> my prayers are with you. I hope you have good insurance. <laughs> God provides. I'm not giving you any more money. I think this was a conversation she had with her teenage son. Put my trust in God. My stockbroker was Bernie Madoff. <laughs> May God be with you. Take a jacket. <laughs> He's operating on a wing and a prayer. Someone did not do his homework. <laughs> lordy, lordy, lordy. Coochie, coochie, coochie. <laughs> I believe that was the exercise portion of her presentation tonight. I am going to heaven. I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> You're, oh, I didn't know we had an autobiographical moment here. You're going to hell. <laughs> Ron, you just volunteered me for what committee? <laughs> and that's, that's what she I came am. up with. No, I have a few more. We have a few more. She's good. <laughs> Rest in peace. Take your Ambien. <laughs> the God particle. You want a piece of me? <laughs> you know, I wrote them up over a very small piece of cherry pie, so stop. Being jealous. One of you cursors had to translate Lolo Lolo MG. Okay, I figured it out. Laugh out loud. Oh my God, what the fuck? Um, so. In nomine al Padre, Filio, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. What? 
<laughs> Thank God I'm an atheist. <laughs> I believe, I believe, but I'd rather have the money. <laughs> This isn't that a curse word. Holy shit! You won the raffle and it's a bag of parrot guano! <laughs> Jesus H. Christ. Chris Christofferson. <laughs> I think this is my last one that I had time for. The Gospel Truth. The Vagina Monologues. <laughs> Ooh, thank you, Alexander. We're coming to the wrap-up portion. You know you're a humanist when. Presented by the older of the two twins. Oh, oh then I'll wait. <laughs> Biatch is two syllables. You know you're a humanist when. Number 10. Wait, I dedicated this to you. You've been the president for five years and no one asks you when you're going to step aside. <laughs> Number nine, you explain the Bible as an historical document and you're called an apostate, not an historian. <laughs> Number eight, you lower your head, bring your hands together, and mutter yourself right before eating dinner, but it's to check your phone messages. <laughs> Number seven, people stand by the rapist in the elevator instead of you. <laughs> Number six, you refer to St. Peter at the gates as that friendly bouncer. <laughs> Number five, you say undergarments during that part of the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> You're reciting it to yourselves now, aren't you? <laughs> I know how that works. Number four, you talk about ethics and morals, but people think you're kidding. Number three, your meetings end with, can I get a whoop whoop instead of amen? Number two, you keep looking for evidence of original sin, yet keep coming up with just those pictures of you at the parties in college. <laughs> And the number one reason you know you're, the, I'm sorry, you know you're a humanist when you call out, oh, Christopher Hitchens, during sex instead of, oh my God. <laughs>